All right, good evening, everybody. I, uh, well, that's a little bit, I'm on my way. No, not like that either. I'm on my way home from work, thank God. And I had a very busy day at work. Interesting day. We spoke a little bit earlier about uh, <laughs> what, what I witnessed over there and, and how the cons consternation that I felt about it. <clears throat> but uh, at the end of the evening, we had an interfaith Thanksgiving uh, service in the prison. And I wish I would have recorded the drushes, they were very nice, the, the sermons that each of the chaplains gave. <coughs> and uh, I want to share what I recall because I was speaking extemporaneously uh, a little bit of what went on. I know a lot of the Kanoim here, a lot of the Zealots might be upset that I participate in such a thing, but that's that's my part, Nasa. It's, it, it might be an Indian of Bukur of Lamalchus that there was in the time of Chazal certain things. We looked the other way. But we were, I, we were, we had six chaplains uh, from different traditions. And we also had the warden of the prison present there. This is the first time we had had an interfaith gathering like this since before the lockdowns that were in reaction to the virus that was around. And so, uh, you know, this is going into my fifth year working there. You know, I'll be completing five years, God willing, in, in a few months, more than four and a half years. And this, is, this would have been the fifth time that we had a Thanksgiving program, uh, but uh, we missed two years. <clears throat> and I remember what we did the other years and what we did this evening uh, now in honor of, of uh, Thanksgiving. And we, so we had the warden there and I said, you know, a few years ago they inaugurated the, the new chief rabbi in England. And they said that, and this is what I said, this, this was just off the cuff how I introduced the warden. I said, they were honored that the highest ranking member of the royal family to ever attend the inauguration of a new chief rabbi um, was present there at the time. And that was uh, Prince Charles, who's now King Charles, was there. And, uh, and they're returning the favor. The, the, the chief rabbi will be there at the, at the coronation of the king and it's it's going to take place on Shabbos and the king is being nice enough to give the chief rabbi somewhere that he can stay in walking distance so that he could attend the coronation I didn't mention that part but it's uh, but in any event this was uh, we were just as honored that the the warden of the prison this is the first time that the warden of the prison ever attended our interfaith thanksgiving uh, service and he said a few words and then one of the things we're supposed to do every year is memorialize all of the inmates who passed away in the past year and since again we didn't do this now this is the third year we remember the last three years and uh, so uh, one of our Catholic chaplain got up and he read something from the book of the wisdom of Solomon which is the book of the Deuter of Canon uh, and it's actually mentioned by the Ramban, by Nachmanides. He read that and then he read the names of those who, who the inmates who passed away. And then I introduced the various chaplains. So the next chaplain that I introduced, I didn't get to introduce the deacon, but I introduced uh, the Native American chief. And again, this was all extemporaneous, off the cuff. I said, you know, it's popular and it's important in America today that we give it land acknowledgement that we're which land of which people we are now on. But it's not enough 
just to remember that historical fact, but also to recognize and celebrate the living, breathing members of those indigenous peoples who are still among us. And so we are here on the land of the Lenape people. We're very honored that we have the chief here who said a few words, said very nice words. And then we had our most senior chaplain, and I introduced him as such, who is a, a uh, Eastern Orthodox Christian priest. And he spoke very nicely. And then uh, the next chaplain I introduced was our Protestant chaplain. And I introduced him that you know, when another prison closed, we gained him. And that was the next one. And then we made history in the first time in our Commonwealth that we hired a pagan chaplain, and we have a, a Norse pagan Gothi. Uh, he's a Theodish Gothi, who um, we just hired him recently. He'd been volunteering there for a few years, and now we hired him in the prison part time as a contract chaplain. And so he was there, and he said a few words, and then and then I got up to speak. So uh, I want to share, now that we're six minutes in with that introduction, what I, I, I can what I can recollect that I said because I didn't really prepare it very well. And but it came out, I, I thank God it came out very nicely. And what what I shared. So I started off as follows. I'll just describe, just try to say it as best as I can. And I, I, you know, the good thing about talking to prison inmates is they don't have Google. So I can say whatever I want and they won't Google it. So I'll say it the way I said it. I don't think it's exactly, historically, it might, I might have been off a year or two. But this is how I said it, and I'm probably wrong. So I said in 1962, that's also the good thing about talking on Shabbos, is that the, the, if you're in an Orthodox shul, your your uh, they they were not going to fact check you on Shabbos, right? So anyway, in 19, uh, this is how I said in 1962. As far as I remember, how I said 1962, in uh, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was speaking to a group of high schoolers in uh, in Detroit. And he said, if your lot in life falls, that you should be a street sweeper. That's kind of a hard word to say. It's a little bit of a tongue twister. Then you should sweep streets like Rembrandt painted pictures. You should sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. You should sweep streets like Mozart wrote symphonies. And again, I don't remember if I said everything exactly in the order that I recall. But I remember some years ago, not some years ago, a few months ago, one of the inmates, who I knew he was from the Wiccan tradition, and, and he's changed since then, as far as I know. He doesn't, he doesn't identify with them anymore. He grew up in that tradition, and he was practicing that tradition. And he was complaining to me that he didn't like his work. You know, in the, in the prison, they give guys work to do, and they get paid some money to work. You know, whatever it is, 19 cents an hour, I think, yet. And the thing is, is that the, the things they buy aren't any cheaper. In fact, it might be sometimes more expensive than we get on the street. And this fellow's job was a schlepper. And he, he really wanted to work. They have a garment shop downstairs, like a sweatshop, really where they make all the, the garments for, and they get paid maybe 50 cents an hour there, I don't know. Uh, and he really wanted to work down there. 
and said he was a schlepper. He was he was schlepping garbage. He was a garbage man. There was you know big carts of, of garbage that he had to bring out to the garbage. And he was very upset about it. And sometimes he would carry the, the the food to the to the other inmates and so forth. Uh, and these big carts he pushed the schlepper. And they said to him, you know, you can make a, from your tradition a spell out of this. You know, on one hand, the fact that you're carrying food to the people, that should give you a lot of satisfaction, that you're giving people nutrition, and that you're getting rid of the garbage, that should be a, a, a cleansing spell, that you're removing the garbage from your soul, from your aura, from your life, and cleaning this place, that's also a very positive thing you're doing, and you should take pride in that, like, like Dr. King said. And I said, you know, the history of Thanksgiving, I think I actually said this before that part, We know the mythology of Thanksgiving, of the pilgrims and the, and the Wampanoag people. And we know the history of the first real Thanksgiving was George Washington called together all the different religions together, just like we're doing now, and then he dispersed them to all go to their own churches and synagogues and mosques and temples and so forth. But the first annual Thanksgiving was during the Civil War. And if you read Lincoln's Thanksgiving address, which is one of the most brilliant pieces of literature, of American literature, and it's worthwhile uh, for anyone, even if you don't sit down and eat turkey, you don't have to eat turkey on Thanksgiving, there's no, no Indian that you have to eat turkey, but for every American to read that on Thanksgiving Day, I believe, because, and, and I've read it here before, and you can look on my, on my YouTube channel for that, and, I, and I've made exposition on that. That, but if you read that passage, that beautiful essay, we see that in the most difficult time in American history, President Lincoln found cause to give thanks. And so too, we have to find to give thanks. One thing I was thinking of saying that I didn't mention was I heard a, a Christian pastor when I was, I was there was a, the pastor wasn't there one Sunday at the prison, so I came to make sure the guys had something to do there, and I showed them a video of a church service, and it was a very famous pastor, he said, uh, African-American pastor, he, he said, the pastor, we all know, and thou art holy, you sit on the praises of your people, and I want to add this to what I didn't say tonight, he says, God doesn't sit on our complaining. That's not his throne, our backbiting, our slander, our gossip. God sings on our praises. That's his throne. That God sits on the praises of his people. We have to develop an attitude of gratitude. And then what I did say, relating back somewhat to what I was discussing before with Martin Luther King. It was a story of Rabbi of Uri of Strelisk, great Hasidic master. I heard this from my Rebbe, from the Kalav Rebbe Shlita. He should have a full shleima. Rabbi Moshe ben Rezel should have a bigger full shleima. I should be zayicha to see coming Mashiach from here, Rabbi Moshe. And uh, he always likes to tell this story, and he shares it. On the, now he's not well. He's not able to communicate other than with one eye that uh, reads his eye movements, the computer reads his eye movements similar to uh, to uh, Stephen Hawking and also he has disease. And 
and so Baal uh, Chaim, our Rebbe, the Kalavar Rebbe Shlita, really the Rebbe of Baal Yisrael, Kalavar Rebbe, um, he, he he communicates like that because he has Lou Gehrig's disease, he has ALS, and he always likes to share this story. He that they printed it many times in the weekly the great Torah that they release from it. And it's the story, there were two Hasidim who they lost their Rebbe, who went to the next world, and so they're looking for a new Rebbe. And they come to the brewery of Strelisk. He passed away in 1826. Strelisk is a town in Galicia. It's now it's Ukraine, near the border of Poland. <clears throat> and Raburi asked them, Do you believe in Ashkocha Protest? Do you believe in divine providence? They said, Yeah, of course, that's what we brought up. That's what we believe. So he said, I want you to come look out the window with me. And he said, Do you see that wagon laden with straw? Do you believe that it was preordained from the six days of creation? Which piece of straw was on top of which, which was on bottom, which was to the left, which is to the right, and which piece will fall off the wagon at exactly which time and in exactly which place? And they said, no, that's, that's a little too far-fetched. He said, you're Apicarsim, you're heretics, I can't even look in your face, get out of here. Obviously, they were very distraught hearing this rebuke, so they had to reflect on it. And they said, they realized like this, to we human beings, Gold is a very valuable thing in the structure of the society that we live. I heard there's a, a an asteroid not too far away that's filled with gold. And they're, they're talking about if they would mine the gold from the asteroid and bring it to Earth. Uh, I didn't mention that and how, you know, everyone would be a billionaire. I said, well, then the money wouldn't be worth anything, the gold wouldn't be worth anything. So I didn't mention that. But in our... in our realm that we have to live in, gold is very valuable. And silver is also valuable, but less valuable than gold. And copper is also valuable, but less valuable than silver. All the way down to eventually you get to a piece of paper. If it doesn't have any sentimental value, you might crumple up, throw in the garbage, not think of it. And a piece of straw, if it fall off the wagon, no one would imagine to go back to pick up that one piece of straw. But that's only in our realm. But in God's economy, the oikonomios of God, it's all the same. There's no difference. You know, even to the subatomic particle, God's providence, since God is infinite, His providence is infinite. You know, I didn't mention, but in the Psalms it says, HaShemayim, Shemayim, LaShem, or it's no son of Adam. The heaven is the heaven of the Lord, and the earth He gave to human beings. That's a different verse. I'm saying, Mi ka Hashem elokeinu makbi l'shoviz, hamashvi l'lirois v'shemayim v'oritz. In the hollow we say, you know, who is like the Lord our God, who comes down to look on the heaven and the earth, meaning the heaven and earth, are, he has to come down, so to speak, to. He, he transcends everything, and so in his transcendent nature, everything's the same. You know, like the joke in that I mentioned, a lot of people like to tell that, you know, someone asks God, how much is million years to you. He said, like a second. And how much is a million dollars to you? Like a penny. So the guy says, well, could I have a penny? He said, well, wait a second. Everyone likes that joke. But there's a lot of depth to it because it works both ways. And I mentioned 
you know, people know that I'm a fan of the old science fiction and monster movies. And there's a movie in 1957, The Incredible Shrinking Man. And at the end of the story, the end of the movie, there's a soliloquy from the shrinking man. He gets smaller and smaller until he gets to the subatomic level. And he said, he realizes there's a point where the infinite and the infinitesimal meet. And to God, there is no zero. And how does that relate to Thanksgiving? And the answer has to be, we have to be thankful to God in all things. Again, I forgot to mention Psalm 150, the very last verse of the Psalms. Baruch Shepasali Deis. This is where I hit the cow last year. I have to be thankful for that, that I survived that. And I wonder how the cow is doing. Anyway, call the Shama to Hallel Ko Hallelujah. Every breath should praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> that with every breath we have to praise God and we have to recognize God's goodness and providence even in the darkest times like Lincoln spoke about even when things are difficult not going our way and I said we develop that attitude of gratitude <clears throat> by thanking God even in the difficult things even in the small things and I spoke about the difference between pride and arrogance. Arrogance is something that's puffed up, like common. Even in the, in the Christian Bible, they also talk about that. Comments, the leaven, the, 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 the leaven of sin. Because that arrogance is being proud of what you are not, and being, puffing yourself up and making yourself look like something that you're not. But the proper type of pride is being proud of what you are and that if you are that street sweeper you're sweeping those streets like Rembrandt like Mozart like Shakespeare and you're proud of that and it's not that you're pretending to be Shakespeare when you're really the sweet the street sweeper but you are that street sweeper and you're just as important in God's eyes as Shakespeare or Rembrandt or Mozart. And that even when things are difficult, and that that kindness is hidden, you still are thankful. And that attitude of gratitude is what can lift you up out of all kinds of sadness and depression. And that I concluded with an exposition of the verse we all know. It's right here on the screen. Praise the Lord, for He is good, for His kindness is forever. And in the Hebrew, there is some ambiguity of what these words mean, and they're all true. First of all, Hodu Hashem Kitov. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, right? But also because it is good, meaning God is good, but it's also give, good to give thanks. And both are true. And then Ki Olam Chasdo, can, we can read it in three ways. One is how it's usually translated, His loving kindness lasts forever. The olam could mean forever. The olam also means to the world. We give thanks we, to the Lord both because it is good and he is good because his kindness is to the world. But also, the olam means hidden. Give thanks to the Lord for it is good. He la olam chasto homiletically. God's kindness is hidden and so we bring out that goodness by giving thanks 
And by developing that attitude of gratitude, we're able to have that goodness within us and appreciate everything that we have. And so even if we're a schlepper, we have to be thankful that we're a schlepper. And I know it's hard. I struggle with this all the time. And I love my job. And I love what I do. And I'm still not satisfied. I'll be honest. But if I work on being grateful and thankful, I'll develop that satisfaction. It was, and that's pretty much what I said. I didn't say that last part about developing the satisfaction. But now thinking back, there was a song I wanted to share. Um, it's a, a Christian song. Um, but I... Um, I, I've shared it before online with, uh, and I said, you know, this comes out to be like almost a Hasidic, like Breslover type of theology from this song. Johnny Cash was a, a minister, right? He was a Christian minister, Johnny Cash. He was the Reverend Johnny Cash. He didn't like people to know he was the Reverend, but he actually, uh, he never pastored a church, but he, uh, he did perform his daughter's wedding one of his daughter's weddings um, and of course he grew up in the church singing hymns and many of his recordings were gospel songs and hymns and there's one song called Good Morning Friend and he talks there and says that he'll keep you satisfied the friend is God you know like we sing Lech Adoni, come our friend Greet the bride. And he says, you know, God's not up on some way up high on some throne in outer space. He's not hiding in some secret hiding place. He'll be your friend to touch and hold when you need. And, uh, and he says, I'm qualified to tell it because I've got it in control. That's a powerful statement for a man like Johnny Cash who fell into drugs and, and uh, debauchery and so many things, but he recognized and knew that the love of God was better to him than any of those earthly pleasures. And again, these are things that we all struggle with. We all fall short. We all could do better. And the way we can do better for a great deal is that attitude of gratitude. I mean, that's why our religion is Judaism. Right? All right, we understand that we come from the kingdom of Judah that took its name from the tribe of Judah because it was in the land of the tribe of Judah and the land of the tribe of Benjamin. And so whatever tribe one comes from, that's all we have left, because the ten lost tribes were lost. <laughs> Even though I know some folks are going marching and saying something else. We don't have to talk about that right now, although there's a lot to talk about. And I think there's a wake-up call that we have to have from all that going on. But in any event, Why are we called, where does the name Judah come from? And next week we read Parshas Vayetze. And Leah says, Zoi sapam Hashem. This time I give thanks. I render thanksgiving unto the Lord. And that's what we're all about. We're the people of thanksgiving. Now we don't need just one day for thanksgiving. We say, Moide Menach Nulach three times a day. Of course, we could have a Yom Iyan in the Indian of Hakar Satov. There's nothing wrong with that. 
and that's what it should be. It shouldn't be about gorging ourselves with the turkey and watching football, or for me, watching Mystery Science Theater 3000 because I'm a nerd, or whatever else, or the parade. Thanksgiving is supposed to be about God, about giving thanks to God for all of the good things that we share. And it's a uniquely American holiday for all the religions to share. And the, you know, the Jews in George Washington's time went to shul and sang a lot of the Tehillim from Hallel, and they and they heard a drusher from from their spiritual leader from Reverend Gershom Sheshus. Who was the trailblazer for America and who was the, the schwer of someone who I love very much? Uh, I've spoken about many times, visited his kever. I'll have to make some time to go to Manhattan and, and see the kever of, of Rav Gershom sometime. But uh, I've gone many times to the kever of, of his Adam. Uh, of his son-in-law, uh, Rabbi Sobert, Sobert Kershit, who was a Talmud of the of the uh, of Rabbi Nussan Adler, he was he was a in cheder together with Chassam Sofer, so to speak. He was in yeshiva together with Chassam Sofer, I believe. Could be wrong there, but he was he was a student of the Chassam Sofer's Rebbe, and he's buried in Queens. Uh, 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 Bear, and he was 11 years the spiritual leader of the Jewish community in Richmond, Virginia, where I didn't serve. I, I wasn't Zaytun to 11 years like he was, but I, I was there a few years to to serve the Rabbanis there as well. And so he's someone very near and dear to my heart. And here on the channel, I actually have a video where uh, Vincent Price was playing uh, Rabbi Gershom Sheshis. <laughs> Could I to, uh, to to reflect on on that history? But anyway, thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you do celebrate Thanksgiving, I'm going to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I know one of my rebbeim, Rabbi Siegel, is on the sunside. is a big, big chassid of celebrating Thanksgiving. And I myself, especially this year, is Rosh Chodesh. So I will sit with my culpic and maybe, maybe I'll make a live stream of a little bit talking about the Yonim of Karsa Toiv. And I hope and pray that we make a, a Kiddush Hashem. And, uh, and God should bless us. And, you know, we have to be humble. You know, that's what upset me most about this story. You know, I don't care. All right, you want to be a reconstructionist and you do all these things, but be a mensch, you know, menschlichkeit, to go and tell people who are visiting in the visiting room, their relatives, an account of three, let's say, mazel tov, that's arrogant and it's not menschlich. And please don't do anything like that. And I'm sorry if I've ever done something like that. You know, it, it, you've got to know your place. And it's, it's, just, it's just so strange to me. That's the other video I made earlier today, which is, it rubbed me such a wrong way. And I want to just give Musr to anyone the same thing. I'll tell you. And I, I know there's a little bit of guy in me telling the story, but I remember... One of my wife's friends got married a number of years ago in Brooklyn, a non-Jewish couple. And I asked the bride, I'm willing, I, I offered my service, I said, I'm willing to perform the ceremony. And she said, no, we have somebody else. So I, we went to the wedding, we went to the ceremony. It was a, a civil ceremony. And the, this woman, who I guess is some kind of ordained minister, she gets up there, and the first thing she says is, my name is Reverend so-and-so. 
Now let me tell you something. I have performed over a thousand weddings. People of all different religions, all different backgrounds. I never once got up and said to the crowd, if there was a crowd there, it's not always a crowd. Hello, my name is Rabbi Joseph Kolakowski. Why would you do such a thing? Who cares? We're not here for you. You know, there's a reason why ministers would wear a black robe. You know, in, in, in the Revolutionary War, the ministers, the pastors, were known as the Black Robe Brigade because the Black Robe represented that I'm invisible. It's not about me. It's about God. It's about the community. And I don't care what religion you are, but you need that humility. If you're going to be a minister, you're going to be a clergy person. That doesn't mean that you don't make a nice ceremony because you're making the nice ceremony not for you, you're making the nice ceremony for your clients, right? When you're officiating at a life cycle event. Okay? So, that's just the message, and I think it's related to everything we just spoke about just now. So, and I don't want to embarrass that rabbi, I don't want to embarrass the couple. But I think it's important in the future, and I didn't mention his name, I didn't mention it. But I think it's it's important for people to be humble. But the thing is, it was, and like I said, the fascinating thing was there at the wedding in the, in the visiting room, there was a Mormon bishop visiting from many hours away. And he said uh, how How inspiring it was what an inspiring expression of faith for a couple to get married in prison and the thing is I've done dozens of prison weddings I stopped doing them when I started working full-time in the prison system but I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't I, I couldn't imagine this it was, it was so strange but I remember you know I used to do a lot of uh, weddings like almost every other week in a county jail in New York State. There was one county jail in particular that I would do all the weddings. And the, uh, and the chaplain would call me, Rabbi, can you do the wedding? So the rabbi there is a Jikavu Rebbe. And Rebbe Schlitter he um, he called me and he said, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and I, I said, "He said, what if a Jewish couple wants to get married?" I said, "That I don't think I would do. I'm just doing it for non-Jewish couples, signing the marriage license, saying a few words, and that's it. And I, I get I make a few dollars. I know I, I had asked." Um, probably shouldn't mention which Dayan I asked. It's a Dayan who's a Rebbe. So if you know people who know Borough Park, you know, there's one Rebbe who's a Dayan. Right. He's from the Vizhnitzer Mishpocha. And um, and I called him and I asked him is it okay to, for a rabbi to sign a marriage license for a non-Jewish couple? He said, yeah, there's no problem with that. So, Baruch Hashem, that's what I do. And I've been doing it for years, you know, I've been doing it uh, for, uh, I guess, uh, about 15 years now. This year, this, this November, it's 15 years that I've been doing the weddings for non-Jewish couples. And, um, and I love it, I enjoy it. 
it's a lot of fun. Sometimes they want a rabbi. I had had a lot of times when it was a mixed marriage between a Muslim and a Christian, and they specifically wanted a rabbi because that was somehow neutral. So I remember I, I spoke at a memorial service for a, a Muslim doctor at the hospital where I'm also a chaplain, and the imam said, Nabi Musa comes first, Prophet Moses comes first, so the rabbi has to speak first. It's only in America, and I'm so thankful for America. I'm so thankful that I'm here. So thankful for all the good things that we have here. While recognizing difficulties in history and the darkness in our history, we have to be so thankful for all the goodness that we have. You know, and that was one of the things I was talking after the service, was talking to the Catholic and Protestant chaplains of how the Native American chaplain understands that while recognizing all of the bad stuff in the history, we have to be thankful to the Creator for all the good stuff that we have. And we can not be ungrateful. And we have to be thankful, you know, instead of saying, oh, we can't celebrate Thanksgiving anymore, and we can't celebrate Columbus Day anymore, uh, we can say, you know what, we're thankful for what we do have. We're thankful for the new things that we have. We're thankful for our heritage and the old things. And we hope that these two worlds can come together as they have in a peaceful and good way of the indigenous and the, and the colonizers and that we've shared something. There was a Colombian exchange, you know. The horses came back to their original home in the Americas, and, the, and we got, and the, uh, the, uh, the other, the old world got potatoes and tobacco and all these things that they didn't have, you know. And, and, uh, and we shared these two worlds. And, and I believe that's by divine providence. I mean, in the story of Thanksgiving, the fact that Squanto was the one who greeted these people, someone who spoke English and was a Christian, and he was able to be the Melitz Bein Oisa. If you don't see the Hashkocha Pratis in that, if you don't see the divine providence in that, you're totally blind, you know? So, uh, you know, I mean, uh, how you don't see that that was God's plan, it's incredible, it's incredible, you know. So, thank you for watching, God bless, please like, share, subscribe, comment, and God willing, we'll see you all later, have a, if you celebrate, have a happy Thanksgiving, but anyway, a good Chodesh, we'll, uh, See you, and, and I'll, I'll try to do something, God willing, for uh, on, on Thursday for and share with all of them here. Appreciate all you all, um, and I look forward to seeing you all. God bless.